Okay, in this lecture, we will locate and identify the major muscles of the neck, including the largest neck muscle, the platysma, the anterior neck muscles, the muscles that affect the larynx, and the muscles that affect the pharynx. So let's get started. As you realize by now, I'm sure, your muscular system is quite extensive and obviously very important to the everyday functioning of your body. So we will finish up the muscular system with this lecture. I'm sure that you're happy to hear that, but this lecture will certainly not be as intense as the others, and I'm sure that you're happy to hear that as well. So we begin our identification of neck muscles on the outside, and we'll work our way inward. The one muscle to consider here is the platysma. Now the root word here is platy. Platy means flat. Now think of the platypus with its flat tail. Now this is a large, relatively thin, superficial muscle. It covers the neck. It is obviously paired, and here you see the right and left platysma muscles. Now this muscle has its origin on the upper chest, and it inserts on the chin and the cheek. Now its action is to maintain tension on the skin of the neck and further depress the mandible, remember, along with the lateral pterygoid. A side note here, one effect of aging is loss of tone in the platysma muscle resulting in the loosening of the skin on the neck. Now if we retract the platysma muscle, then we expose the anterior neck muscles. There are several to consider here, and by the way, all of these muscles are paired. So we have the digastric, the mylohyoid, the geniohyoid, the stylohyoid, and the sternocleidomastoid. Now these five muscles control the position of the larynx, or your voice box. Now the larynx is a structure of your respiratory system, which we'll see in detail in the next lecture. And by the way, I don't want you to be frightened by the names of these muscles. Most of them tell you exactly what's going on here. So we have the digastric. Now as its name implies, the digastric muscle has two bellies. The anterior belly originates on the inferior surface of the mandible at the chin, and the posterior belly originates on the lower region of the temporal bone. Now both bellies insert on the hyoid bone, and their collective actions are to depress the mandible and elevate the larynx. Now lying just under the digastric muscle is the mylohyoid muscle. The mylohyoid serves as the muscular floor of the mouth along with the geniohyoid muscle. Now the fibers of the mylohyoid run laterally while those of the geniohyoid run longitudinally. Both muscles originate on the mandible, both insert on the hyoid bone, and collectively they depress the mandible, elevate the larynx, and elevate the floor of your mouth. We have the stylohyoid. Now, as its name implies, the stylohyoid muscle has its origin on the styloid process of the temporal bone, recall that structure from lecture two, and its insertion on the hyoid bone. Here is the anterior belly of the digastric muscle, and here is the posterior belly of the digastric. Now, the styloid process of the temporal bone is here, and the hyoid bone is here. And here is your stylohyoid muscle, whose action is to elevate your larynx. We round out the group of five with the sternocleidomastoid. This long muscle here is your sternocleidomastoid muscle. It has two bellies or heads. The sternal head here has its origin on the sternum or breastbone. The clavicular head here has its origin on the clavicle or collarbone. Now both heads merge, and the muscle has its insertion at the mastoid area of the skull. Finally, the sternocleidomastoid acts to flex the neck and bend the head to the side. So here you can clearly see the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid. We have the thyrohyoid muscle. Now the thyrohyoid is a comparatively small muscle that originates at the thyroid cartilage of the larynx and inserts at the hyoid bone. The action of the thyrohyoid muscle is to elevate the thyroid gland. Now your thyroid gland is right down here. It is part of the endocrine system, which you'll learn about in section 5. Now the next three anterior neck muscles are what I call the strap muscles, as they are comparatively long and narrow. We have the omohyoid here, the sternohyoid here, and the sternothyroid right here. All of the strap muscles act to depress the larynx. 
Finally, let us consider the muscles that affect the pharynx. Now remember that the pharynx is the area of the throat. The oral pharynx recalls that area shared by the digestive and respiratory systems. So we have three small muscles to identify here. The superior, the middle, and the inferior pharyngeal constrictors. Now all of these muscles are constrictors and therefore collectively act to constrict the wall of the pharynx during swallowing. Now this squeezing, if you will, of the pharynx propels the bolus into the esophagus and towards the stomach. And here is your esophagus. So we will finish up this section in the next lecture by looking at the superior structures of the respiratory system. So I will see you shortly.